Hello. In this video I want to discuss fixtures, how you can prevent a stress concentration that you see over here. So first I'm going to do that for a square part and later on I'm going to show how you can do the same for a cylindrical part. So that you can get these points to select them to prevent this stress concentration. So that'll, that'll be further on in this video. So every part has six degrees of freedom as you can see here. Three translational and three rotational all around the x, y and z direction. And in a FEM analysis you have to prevent them from moving to perform a FEM analysis to be able to get a good result. So here you can see there's a stress concentration in this part, in this square part, that has a, only a force in the x direction. So I can show that in SOLIDWORKS as well. I'll switch over to this part. And I've already run this study. So I've completely fixed this surface and I've put a force over there. And then when I run it, I've already run this. So can look at the stress results then I can see a stress concentration over here and that's because of the Poisson's effect so the material stretches and it wants to contract but on this surface it can't because all degrees of freedom are fixed so it can't contract and that's why you get these stress concentrations over here so what you could do to prevent them is change this fixture in a use reference geometry uh, let me see, I want to restrain it only in this direction. You see the arrows, they show in which direction now this surface cannot move anymore. And now I've, I haven't restrained all six degrees of freedom. If I look over here on the second sheet, I've only restrained now this degree of freedom in the x direction and rotation around z and y direction because I applied the restraint on a surface. So. I haven't fully restrained it, so now SOLIDWORKS shouldn't be able to run. Let's have a look what happens. Takes a little while. Takes very long. You see, that's a problem, that's probably why it took so long. So the, the part has moved, so this is not correct. And you could uh, prevent this from happening by using soft springs. So you, you can see it over here. Use soft springs, but that's a bit of a, a strange option. If you use that, SOLIDWORKS will apply soft springs to stabilize the model, just as it says. And then it, it won't move like it has moved in, in this case. But there's something a bit strange about that way of working. So the best way would be to apply the boundary conditions in the most appropriate way. You could do that in other FEM packages as well. So the same restraint, it's, I've switched to another study, same restraint to just prevent the movement of this surface in this direction. And as I can see over here, that takes away three degrees of freedom. Then if I fix one point, it takes away two translational degrees of freedom that weren't fixed before. So then I've only got one degree of freedom left. And that's the rotation around the x axis. And I can, pre can prevent that by using, I can show this. So here I've got one point completely fixed. So that takes away two, degree, two degrees of freedom in translation. And the last one takes away the rotation around the x direction. If this point cannot move anymore in the z direction, it cannot rotate around the x direction. So that's the, the most. Uh, pure way to restrain this part then I can run it probably this goes a bit faster because it doesn't have the lacking degrees of freedom and you can see so sometimes now it looks nice the the stress is one newton per square millimeter because I applied 100 newton on a surface of 100 square millimeter and sometimes you see this I can show that when you choose automatic maximum and automatic minimum you see these spots on the surface and it's because the scale is very close to each other so this what you see here now is a rounding errors you see this value lies very close to this value you can prevent it by choosing a, a bit l wider range which makes for a better plot because otherwise these these surfaces will only raise questions if you put it in a report it will raise questions for the reader so now 
I'm going to show how to do this for a round cylinder, how you can apply the same boundary conditions. You see, I've put the fixtures here on points, but in a, a round cylinder, you don't have these points. So then I can generate these points by choosing insert and then curve and then split line. I choose intersection and I want to split this surface. Let me see. Uh, here you see, I chose the wrong one. If I wait over here, I see here I have to choose the splitting bodies or surfaces. So here I should have chosen the top plane. And then here I can choose this surface over here. You see these yellow lines appearing. And now, now I've got these points that I can select in my FEM analysis. These two points I can select to create exactly the same boundary conditions as I've done for the square part earlier on. So that's what I wanted to show in this video. Thanks for watching.